Hey, this is James Pelton, and I am back from LA, back from the Constellation High Def Conference. Um, I have a lot of thoughts that I want to share from the conference and just uh, kind of give you my take uh, on crypto going forward. But Constellation DAG is the biggest thing in crypto right now, okay? And I believe in it so much. Like, it's it's the most thing that I believe in in crypto, okay? So if it fails, I think I'm pretty much going to give up on crypto, okay? It's like if the, the top, the pinnacle of what you're looking for doesn't work, then you kind of know the things below it won't either. So it's kind of to me like the all or nothing of crypto. First off, appreciate you guys hitting the like button. If this is content that you want to see, shooting for a thousand likes. A lot of people don't understand the gravity of what Constellation's building because they hear some of the technology, the technological jargon um, going on, and then their mind just kind of turns off and they're like, no, I'd rather go buy an NFT, you know, that I can see. Um, we're very simple people, I've found. But the first thing I noticed from the conference was it, it brought me back to my venture capital days. So I ran a business and I sold it and I had a bunch of money and I looked to invest. And I started doing venture capital, and basically, we would just have uh, projects. Let's not, let's not call them projects. They're businesses, okay? We'd have businesses coming in, and then we would ask them some questions and then decide if we were going to invest in them or not. It's basically what I do on my AMAs. Um, but the main questions that we were always looking for every time um, these businesses came in was, hey, what problem are you trying to solve? What utility do you offer? How do you make normal people's lives better? How do you solve problems? Um, those were the types of questions that we uh, asked. And then for, some, for one reason or another, when I got into crypto, I kind of just, everything I learned from venture capital and angel investing and that side of traditional finance, I just basically forgot it all when I came into crypto. But what we ended up with was, this does look familiar, but I ended up with a bunch of projects like this where it's like, okay, the chickens, what problem do they solve? What utility do they have? Or like Krabata, you know, came to Krabata and, you know, sending out my crabs on these mining expeditions. It's like it was making a lot of money, but what, you know, what does it solve? What is it actually doing that makes anyone's life better? Um, then even projects like Thor, you know, I love the team, um, but it's like, well, what is Thor doing you know what's the utility and the, and i know a lot of these projects are trying to bring utility now um, because in the bull market just everything made money you could just have these nfts or even like let's just do something more basic we'll do cyberpunks but what utility do these things bring okay i mean maybe some vanity they show your show other people that you're rich or you know something like that but uh, and there's money to be made in these types of projects, these like kind of more, you know, tokenomic games and um, play to earn games and, you know, these type of things. I think there's money to be made here. But if you fast forward 10 years, uh, it's not going to be these types of projects that are still around. It's going to be the ones that actually did something that changes the world. So I don't know why it took me, you know, so long to realize this. It really took the bear market coming and then you could see which, you know, which businesses had utility were necessary and which ones were just kind of something fun to do with your money. So I've been really starved for utility, for business use cases, for changing the world, those types of things. And then in Constellation, what I found is a network, a chain that is just full of projects that are doing that. They're businesses with use cases, revenue streams, looking to change the world. So that was one realization I had. Another realization I had is the importance of data. Okay, I don't think we understand data. When we think of data, we just you know think Star Trek. Maybe that's just me. Everything that is digital is data. Okay, so the internet. You know, you talk about the internet. That's one of the most life changing technology advances of our time. Right? It changed the way that we do everything. It changed the way every single business functions. And really, all the internet is is an exchange of data. Okay, Netflix is just data streaming to your computer. Your phone is just voice data or internet data or, or app data all going to a device. So everything digital is an exchange of data. And you're not going to understand um, the importance of the blockchain 
and the hypergraph, which we'll talk about here in a minute, you won't understand how big of a game changer this is in the world until you understand the importance of data. Okay, so we're going to have a, a little bit of education, and I don't just flip away immediately, okay? Uh, I'm not going to explain all the, the technology that's down there. You don't have to understand exactly how the internet works to know that it changes people's lives and that you can make money from it, okay? Um, so the same is true with the blockchain. Up until the blockchain, data was stored in centralized databases. So whoever built the application, whether it be Google or Facebook or whoever, they owned the data. Okay, it was all there. It was their database. But when the blockchain came in, and really Bitcoin was kind of the first blockchain that came in, it was opposite. It was not centralized in one location. It was decentralized. So there's basically, there's a copy of the data in all these different places. And what that results in is it's almost impossible to hack. I'm not going to say impossible because somebody will find a way maybe uh, someday, but it's it's super secure because if someone gets into one of the places and changes the data, all these other nodes, if you will, can check and say, hey, that data is not good. And then they invalidate it and take it over with good data. So it's it's very hard for a hacker to get in there. Also, it's immutable. You're not able to go back and change data. You can't hide anything. Because, again, if you go in and try to change something, the same as with a hacker, all these other nodes where the data is going to be different, they'll match up with each other and say, hey, this one's bad, and they'll, they'll kick it out. So that's a very, very different way of uh, dealing with data. It's a better way of, of storing data, keeping data safe, and decentralizing it. And I'll show you some business use cases where that's super helpful here in a minute. So that was the blockchain. Then we have the hypergraph technology of Constellation DAG. And we'll, we'll kind of call this blockchain 2.0 because there was some problems with the blockchain. Um, first off, it's incredibly slow and incredibly expensive to make transactions. So, and Bitcoin's the worst, but Ethereum uh, was an improvement. Okay, it was faster and it was cheaper. But we're starting to see limitations there also, right? It can only do about 30 transactions per second on Ethereum and the whole chain. Because if we want businesses to move onto the blockchain, traditional businesses, because that's where mass adoption takes place, okay? We're probably not going to get mass adoption from a new company creating on the blockchain. Mass adoption is going to come when Google stores their data on the blockchain, but with Ethereum, you, there's 30 transactions per second on the whole chain. So not just your company, but 30 a second. And it's like $15, $20 per transaction. So you can imagine a business wanting to use blockchain technology, but oh, hey, you can only make on the whole chain 30 transactions a second, and it's going to be about $15 each time you transfer data. I mean, that's just not usable for most businesses. Think about the business you work for, okay? They couldn't. Uh, work with data in that way. So the hypergraph comes along, it's kind of blockchain 2.0. So think of Ethereum, we're getting to the end of the educational portion, okay? Don't give up, you gotta, gotta learn some things. But think of Ethereum, a normal blockchain, like a teacher grading papers, okay? And they're a very fast teacher, so they can do 30 papers Per second, okay, that's, that'd be very fast grading, okay, but they're, so these papers are pouring in and they're doing 30 a second, but you can see there's going to be a queue built up and if you have too many papers, if you have 300,000 papers, then it's going to take the teacher forever to get through them all. So what Constellation's done with the hypergraph is instead of a teacher grading papers 30 a second, they imagine it as the hypergraph is the teacher telling the students to grade each other's papers. Okay, I think that's the best way to kind of explain the technology behind it. So then you're not limited by one teacher. You can have as many students as you like, and it doesn't slow it down. If you have a million students, it takes about the same as two students. So what that's resulted in with Constellation DAG is much, much, much faster. They recently... Um, they're getting ready to release their mainnet 2.0, and they did a test a couple weeks ago. And again, I said Ethereum does 30 transactions a second, again, on the whole chain, 30 a second. Uh, Hypergraph did 87,000 in seven seconds, okay? So it's 
I mean, it's magnitudes of times faster. Um, and actually, as more data is processed, it speeds it up rather than slowing it down. Another thing is it's much cheaper. Again, Ethereum, you're looking at maybe, you know, sometimes we see gas prices at 10 bucks, 15 bucks for one transaction. On Hypergraph, 300,000 transaction costs one cent. Okay, that's the pricing that we're looking at. So you're going to have free transactions and they're going to be fast. And what that does is it opens it up to businesses to use it how they want to use it. One other big change too, and then after this, we'll get out of education and get into some projects and how you can make money off of this knowledge. You know, Warren Buffett, you can see I've got a Warren Buffett, there it is, a Warren Buffett plush toy because he's the only thing Nebraska is known for. Um, but he said, if you want to make a lot of money in any market, you have to either be early smarter or patient okay and i think we have the opportunity with all three of those uh, with constellation deck we can be early because uh, we are early right now you go ask anybody on the street hey have you heard of constellation dag and they'll say no they've probably heard of the blockchain so we're 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 ending being early on blockchain you know we're not early on shiba inu we're not early on dogecoin don't go buy dogecoin right now we're not early there but we're early on Constellation, and I think you can be educated. You can be smarter. You can understand this technology is better than other technology. And I think you can be patient, okay? And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Um, but this isn't like a lot of our other crypto projects where we're hoping to make 40% a month or something like that. This is something where we're, we're buying and then being patient as the technology takes over the world, essentially. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, what I think profit-wise here in a little bit. So now that we have the technology to make it possible, I mean, the, the possibilities are limitless, okay? But I just want to give some examples of things that I think are exciting, and there's a ton of them. I'm going to do a separate video, my top 10 Constellation projects, because there's so many doing so many things, and I, and I feel guilty for not including them all. But I'm just going to pick show you a couple examples of how this new technology can change the, the world. And one of the biggest, uh, you've heard me talk about them before, is with BioFi. Okay? And I believed in this project so much that I'm actually I'm joining their team to help them with some marketing because I want to help translate. Again, sometimes the, the technical people have a harder time communicating the message to the masses. And so that's what I want to try to help do is be the interpreter from technical to uh, you know normal people. But so BioFi allows biometric data, so like your eye print, your fingerprint, your voice, um, things about your, you know, data about yourself. Um, and normally that's data that we don't necessarily want a company to have, right? Like I don't necessarily want Google. We let Apple have our face for face, facial recognition, but it's kind of like, do we really want Google to own my thumbprint and all these things? So the beauty of what BioFi is doing is they're taking your biometric data they encrypt it and they put it on the blockchain. Okay, so no one, no one owns it. No one has access to it. It's just, but it's out there available to be used. And so there's a whole bunch of different ways that they're using this right now. I think the one that seems to be uh, picking up the most is this SayTech technology. Um, so basically the goal with this SayTech technology is for you to never have to type in a password again anywhere. OK, that's the goal. Um, every website you go to, ideally, you know, in a perfect world, it would just see my face. My webcam would see my face. My microphone would hear my voice and it just would let me into every website. Um, and that's what say tech technology is doing. They've been partnering with a lot of the big phone providers in Africa. I have an AMA coming up here soon with with one of those um, to put this say tech technology on their phones again. So you don't have to do a password you can use biometrics. And this is really exciting. I don't mean to turn this into a BioFi video, but usually when you make things more secure, it makes them more inconvenient. So like, you know, you add two-factor authentication where you have to text, you know, to log into something. That's more secure, but it's less convenient. When they made passwords have to be, you know, add a bunch of special characters. That made it way more secure, but again, it's more inconvenient. And BioFi's SayTech is the first thing that I've probably ever seen in security that makes it more secure and more convenient at the same time. And they've kind of started in Africa because, you know, since their technology is emerging, it's easier to change the way that, 
you know, African mobile providers are doing things than it is to, you know, get in touch with Verizon and say, do this on all your phones. Um, but I think we're approaching a day where you never type in another password ever again. And the blockchain makes that possible. Another one is the Alchemy Exchange, okay? So the Alchemy Exchange, uh, you don't understand how much your data is worth to Google and to Facebook. That's uh, Google and Facebook makes all their money from your data, okay? And then taking your data and giving it to advertisers, and the advertisers pay them for the data, basically. But your, your data is being sold all over the place, okay? And you don't see any profit from it. Um, so what Alchemy Exchange is doing is it's taking your data – putting it in the, on the blockchain, and if anyone wants access to it, they have to pay you for it. So you make money off of your data being used, okay? Um, and again, this is only possible if it was decentralized. You couldn't have a centralized business doing it this way. Jennyco, the same way, and again, these are just three examples, uh, but Jennyco, the same thing with your healthcare data, right? Healthcare data can't be shared. That's very private stuff, but there's a lot of research companies and doctors and hospitals that want healthcare data. And now this creates an exchange where your healthcare data, you can keep it private if you want, or you can sell it yourself to the hospitals and to the, the pharmacists and all those, uh, the drug manufacturers, and then you get paid for your data if you want to. Um, it's just decentralizing everything, putting you in control. So again, those are just three examples. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. Again, I'm going to do a separate video with my top 10 uh, Constellation projects. But I hope that starts to kind of open up your, your mind to see, oh man, there's so many new things that can happen uh, because of this new technology. And the blockchain made it possible. And also Constellation made it possible because you couldn't do these things if you were doing $15 per transaction and 30 a second, um, these things just wouldn't work. So, but then this new technology uh, from Constellation is so powerful that we even have the U.S. government's getting into it. So the Department of Defense, which uses a ton of data, um, they said centralized systems. So again, those databases that are centralized are too expensive and not fast enough to process, validate, and manage the volumes of data required for making quick decisions in the field without significant security risks. So the Department of Defense has signed a contract. So this isn't even like a potential partnership. There's a signed contract uh, between the Department of Defense and Constellation DAG, where they've seen the technology and they've said, hey, when the Department of Defense, we know that the blockchain is where our data needs to be. It can't be in a database anymore. And Constellation DAG is the blockchain technology that is going to be useful for making this happen. Okay. I, this is big. This is very big. No one else is doing anything like this. So we have companies starting to buy in. We have the government starting to buy in. And you can see why I say if this doesn't work, I mean, what more use case could you find than the Department of Defense, the United States government? Um, and that's why I say if this doesn't work, then I don't think crypto is going to be what we thought it might be, okay? This is the make or break thing for mass adoption on the blockchain, in my humble opinion. So then comes the question, well, so how do I make some money? Okay, and it's funny how we as humans think. I'm the same way, but oh, it's like changing the world. That's great, yada, 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 yada. How do I make money from it, okay? And uh, the first way is just getting involved in the different projects on in the Constellation network, okay, in the ecosystem. So again, I'm gonna try to bring as many projects as I can. I already brought BioFi and GeoJam, and I have CBD coming next next week, and I'll just try to bring as many as I can as I see business use cases, I'll try to bring them on. Um, but another way is you can take a, a part of the whole ecosystem by buying the DAG token, okay? And I really love this market cap of uh, tool because it kind of shows you like what coin appreciation values are make sense. Like I hear people say, oh, Shiba Inu is going to 100 X. And it's like, well, then the market cap would have to be more than the whole earth or, or, or something like that. Um, it's just not possible. But you can compare two things that are alike and kind of see, OK, we could reasonably see this here. So let's take the Constellation DAG. That's the native token. And let's compare it to AVAX. OK, because AVAX Honestly, AVEX is to me is kind of like the 
useless chain, all right? It's got all these just play-to-earn games that don't have any use and these weird NFTs and things like that. Uh, ant games, crab games, chicken games. It, it's the animal. Maybe that's what the A in AVAX stands for. But if DAG can just get to the size of AVAX, that's a 28X from where we're at now. Okay, I think that's a no-brainer. Okay, I think that's a no-brainer that it's going to get to be the, the market cap of AVAX. So you could go bigger than that. You could say, I think Constellation is going to get as big as Ethereum is now. Well, that'd be an 800x uh, for DAG to go from where it is to where Ethereum is now in, in terms of usage. And I think, I mean, that's not going to happen this year, probably. Um, but I don't think that's an unrealistic expectation uh, in the, over the next five years. I mean, I, who knows? It's hard to know the time horizons on some of these things, but I don't think that that's an unrealistic expectation. So getting DAG at this price when it's low, it's not commonly accepted. Um, I think that is a great investment in your future. And if you get up to 250,000 DAG, you can soft stake. That's how many tokens you need for a node. So if you get 250,000, which at these prices would be about $27,000, um, then you can soft stake for a node. But just grabbing it and holding on to it, I mean, you know, waiting for this 785X, um, and it has more utility than Ethereum does, okay? So, I mean, I think I wouldn't be su surprised to see it 1,000X, 2,000X, something like that. So that'd be the first way to get involved. The second would be um, with their LTX token. So the Lattice Exchange um, is going to be the uh, kind of the pancake swap of Constellation Network or the, the Uniswap of Constellation Network. So Uniswap is the DEX for Ethereum. Pancake Swap's the DEX for Binance Smart Chain. Trader Joe is kind of the DEX for uh, AVAX. And uh, Constellation's DEX is called LTX. And I, I'm going to do a whole video on LTX because it's also going to do other chains and the fees are going to be so much lower. Um, I could see LTX um, just completely wiping out Uniswap, all the other swaps pretty much um, with what they're doing. But let's just say, let's say it gets to the price of Uniswap. We'll say LTX overtakes Uniswap. That's 174X. Again, so buying that LTX token at these prices and just holding it and waiting for something like this. Even if it does, we'll say pancake swap. Okay, that's, I mean, that wouldn't be too hard. That'd be a 26X uh, for it just to overtake pancake swap. So it's like, do you think the exchange that the Department of Defense is going to be using could overtake pancake swap? Uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're possible, we're in here for a big culture shift in crypto. Okay. And I don't think like, I don't think these type of things, pancake swap are going to go away. Um, but I just think there's a lot bigger use case for DAG and LTX than what we see here. So if you want to buy DAG or LTX, you can get it off KuCoin. So I use these DCA bots and you can just say, hey, I want to buy, we'll say DAG. I want to buy, we'll say $50 of DAG every day. Or I want to buy $250 of DAG every week or or something like that. Um, or I want to do the same thing with LTX, then it'll just go in and as long as you have USDT in your KuCoin account, it'll go ahead and do this. You can see I have these bots running. I'm, I have Quant, which I do another whole video talking about that, uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, ADS, which is the that Alchemy Exchange, LTX, and DAG. Um, and I also do DCA BioFi, but they're just not available on KuCoin yet. So that would be one way to buy is just get on KuCoin. Another is with their Stargazer wallet. And we didn't talk much about this, but the Stargazer wallet is Constellation's wallet. And so you can buy direct on there. You can say, I want to buy Constellation. And minimum is $50, but I want to buy $250 of DAG on here. Confirm, that'd be 2100 DAG. And then it'll come and just let you buy with your credit card. So you don't even have to be crypto savvy. And you can put money into DAG and into LTX and into these coins and hold. And I think people have a little bit of a hard time because we're so used to just these short-term gains in crypto. Like that's what we're looking for is, hey, I need to get my money back here in the next like three days or the project's going to fall apart. Um, but that's not how venture capitalists think. 
when people are putting money into Facebook or into, you know, the Silicon Valley type companies, nobody thinks I want my money back in the next three weeks. Uh, the wealthy people who put money into there, they say, I want a thousand X in five years or 10 years. Okay. That's what they're kind of doing. And that's what we're looking at with these projects. Um, and that's part of the reason they haven't exploded the way that they might. Okay. And I just wanted to quickly show you, um, this, trailer video they did. I think it's really well done and I'll kind of give my reactions to it as we go. I've always wanted to do a reaction video. So here's the start of that. Uh, but yeah, this is a trailer for Constellation. Look, that's so cool. So techie. Say hello to Constellation. Hello. A distributed network that enables fast, scalable solutions for organizations who need to process and transfer data securely. Okay, and actually, I want to pause one second. I won't pause too much. I know that's probably annoying. But um, even in that first sentence, I think there's like, it's basically just what I said earlier. But I think sometimes sentences like that, you hear, oh, a distributed ledger for data for companies to access data. And it's just you kind of turn your brain off. Um, but it's just what I was talking about earlier. Founded during the crypto winter of 2018 by tech veterans, Wyatt Melvin. Super Fox, nice guys. Brown, uh, we got to meet all these guys, and they're all super nice down to earth. Vehicles. We believe that in order for the DLT space to truly garner... Okay, DLT is distributed ledger. Is needed. By leveraging DAG technology, edge computing, and AI, Constellation's Hypergraph is truly the first DLT built with big data in mind. Since our beginning, we've seen our goals and constellation manifested. We witnessed industries, developers, and individuals who share our vision and want to engage with our platform, creating all sorts of exciting new opportunities we never could have imagined. March 2020, Constellation partnered with Quant to launch a universal connector for Overledger. I need to do a video on API Quant to connect to any blockchain through Overledger. Upcoming. That month, our mainnet launched where we switched from ERC-20 to our own native token, DAG. This is a big week for us this week as we prepare That's for Ben Jorgensen, March. super nice guy. April 2020, Constellation gets the attention of the U.S. military, and we were awarded a contract by the U.S. Air Force. In July 2020, from air defense came space defense. Constellation was chosen to chair the blockchain working group within Space Isaac. September 2020, Lattice Exchange was launched to support the many new projects building on content. Talked about that. That's the LTX token. Millions of dollars for launch pad projects. The Lattice Gateway is a looking glass into the ecosystem empowering individuals to participate in various products across the hypergraph. In January 2021, we partnered with software company Splunk. Splunk's a huge software company. More than 15,000 of their clients. In February 2021, the Constellation community helped launch Stargazer, Stargazer Wallet, which is really, a robust really nice wallet. wallet that powers not only the Constellation ecosystem, but the future of interconnected blockchain networks. In March 2021, we partnered with Mobi, the Mobility Open Blockchain Initiative, who work with a number of major partners to shape the future of That's the like driving data, going to the blockchain. Change. Again, couldn't do in that on Ethereum. The launch of Alchemy Exchange. We talked about Alchemy. That's that ADS to token. On the hypergraph. Alchemy aims to restore the value exchange between advertisers, publishers, and users. In July 2021, Constellation took the stage at the Crypto Mundo event in Madrid, leaving with a host of new Spanish Crypto Mundo. Do we have so much coming? I'm so excited to share with everybody because it's going to take the entire industry by storm. In August 2021, we launched our flight program, an educational accelerator for projects who wish to utilize the hypergraph. We I have an AMA coming up with that drone company also. Flight. Super cool. The success cool. with the U.S. military meant that in August 2021, they expanded the role of Constellation within the Department of Defense, awarding us a contract with U.S. Transcom. With this contract, we will start working towards securing data for one of the largest data producers in the world. September 2021, GeoJam, a graduate of our And uh, the conference was at the GeoJam headquarters. By combining DeFi with real world experiences, GeoJam is creating a new economy for artists, 
creators, and fans alike. In October 2021, Constellation acquired hardware company Door Technologies. This enabled us to combine our existing mobile node infrastructure with the Door Traffic Miner, creating the largest mesh network. So yeah, it's a device that keeps track of foot traffic. Our second oh, program. yeah. And then I, this is the drone company. I'm going to have an AMA with them. Drone delivery. Autonomous drone delivery. I love it. Talk about changing people's lives. Since the inception of our flight program, more than 75 Finavant is BioFi. We kicked off 2022 in style by partnering with Helium. Enabling the secure and private transfer of millions of data points from the door traffic. So yeah, Helium's working Helium on getting a network, not Wi-Fi, but Anywhere similar to that, but like a we web that is everywhere. To talk about our work with the federal government on blockchain adoption. We're learning about entry points of which can impact your business. On June 29th, a live demo run of our test net with two node clusters yeah, this was, during this was the hypergraph cool. hour showed 80,000 transactions in seven seconds. And we were able to show that we can run consensus successfully in parallel. Later in summer 2022, Mainnet 2.0 Genesis block is on track for a summer release. Yep, should be here in August. The sometime. development of state channels. Constellation is the key to a data-driven economy and has been on an incredible journey over the past few years. We are trusted by some of the biggest companies and institutions on Earth and are quickly becoming a household name within the blockchain world. This is just the beginning for Constellation, and we look forward to building the future with you. This is the opportunity to actually create our own market and our own world that directly reflects our ethos and our values. It's a ticket to freedom, man. All right. Well, if you made it this far, you are awesome. Hashtag watch the whole video. Comment that down below. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys. I hope this is helpful for you. Again, I'm not trying to shill anything. Constellation's not paying me to make a video or anything like that. I just believe that this is the biggest thing in crypto. Um, it's the most use case, the most revenue streams, and I'm just excited about it. And I want you to be a part of it. Um, so again, if you found this helpful, please hit the like button. Really do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you.